simple question: Why do the bubbles sink when you pour a pint of Guinness, or do they, in fact, sink at all? To answer this almost trivial question, first let's look at a normal pint of beer, like Budweiser. This carbonated beverage has large bubbles and a small head, but most importantly, the bubbles rise on pouring. So, what's the difference between that and a pint of Guinness? Guinness is a stout, so as well as carbon dioxide, it contains nitrogen dissolved in the dark, tasty liquid. The nitrogen being important here, as it gives a less bitter taste and a longer-lasting head. To smaller bubbles forming, as the nitrogen is less soluble than carbon dioxide. But is it this small bubble size that plays a crucial role in the bubbles sinking? The flow of bubbles was tested in a simulation by Service, who compared buoyancy and downward force. The simulation showed that the downward force was greater than the buoyancy force. The simulation tested two glass shapes, as you can see being carefully drawn here. These are the pint and the so-called anti-pint, where the anti-pint is merely a pint glass flipped upside down. What was seen was that the container shape also played a role in the phenomenon. The bubbles moved down in the pint, but not in the anti-pint. So, let's recap. In the comparison between bubble size, it's clear to see that the smaller nitrogen bubbles are needed for the downward floating, because bigger carbon dioxide bubbles do not float down. We also see that it occurs in a normal pint, but not in an anti-pint, so the container shape also plays a role. So, what's the key then? The key is bubble density and liquid flow. All the bubbles flow up in isolated motion. However, the liquid that the bubbles are contained within can flow down. Because the bubbles float in the pint glass, the bubbles move away from the wall of the container, meaning bubble concentration is lower there than at the centre of the glass. A concentration gradient is set up, so what we see is liquid flows down at the sides of the container and up through the middle. The opposite occurs in an anti-pint because the concentration gradient is higher on the outsides than the insides, and hence why we don't see bubbles float down in an anti-pint. So in the case of Guinness, the downward flow of liquid is faster than the bubbles' upward velocity, and hence we see this downward flow of bubbles. So, to answer the question, why do bubbles sink in Guinness? It's clearly not as simple as it first might have seemed and relies on several things occurring at once, the shape of the container, the size of the bubbles. But if the bubbles are just the right size and the glass is just the right shape, you might see this phenomenon in your next pint.